संस्कृत अध्यात्म पदावली ओम ह्रीं नमो So what is Pahala's first Sukh, which is the first happiness? When a child is born, the child is crying. He's not happy. You are happy the child came to your family, right? So is it happiness or a sorrow? Is birth joy or sad? Sadness. What does it involve? Trauma for the person. <laughs> yeah. For the person. Mother is in pain. Child is crying. Only the family is laughing. Yeah. Right? And enjoying and having the fun. Yeah. Right? Mother is not allowed to eat anything and everything. Right? She's just having very strict uh, this thing. So the question of happiness is very relative. 
and why is it relative because we live a life of relativity we live like we live a life of relationship so in the context we stand and we do things the definition will change so here rajashi has written a book akashi ma ko ye pehla sukh niyogi kaya the first happiness of course the happiness which we talk about the soul is bliss which is unconditional which is for everyone equally there there is no argument about it but when it comes to a, a, a life itself the happiness actually makes a big difference there so health is actually well health is where happiness comes and he achashi here says sukh ke vivid prakar pehla sukh aarogya स्वस्थ व्यक्ति की सफलता का स्वस्थ व्यक्ति ही सफलता का अधिकारी योग्य देर आर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ हैप्पीनेस एंड द फर्स्ट हैप्पीनेस इज रिलेटेड टू हेल्थ इफ यू हेल्दी यूर हैप्पी एंड ओनली अ हेल्दी पर्सन हैज द एबिलिटी ऑफ सक्सेस दिस हाउ वी डिफाइन इट बिकॉज इफ अ पर्सन इज अनहेल्दी सक्सेस डज इन कम टू हिम और हर even if it comes it is not the way it's not experienced the way it should be experienced and when we say health it's not really a physical health only it involves mental and emotional health as well if a person is emotionally down and gets a promotion the joy would not be to that extent but if the person is open happy joyful every small accomplishment the person would take it as a big thing and he'll enjoy it So the joy or sorrow actually depends on our mental and emotional conditions as well. Here, Ache she says um, when he talks about arogya, nirmal jiski chetna, indriya manasu prasanna, dosh agni samamalakriya, vahi swast sampan. So how do he defines health? He says nirmal jiski chetna. The first condition is. not that your body is healthy but your consciousness is pure that would mean a healthy state indriya manasu prasanna your mind and senses are joyful dosha agni samala kriya this this is something very uh, intense package for he swasth sampan only that person is really healthy so the the health or the uh, joy comes with the consciousness itself rather than just being external so are you saying that uh, being healthy in emotional and physical sense means that you are up on your path of towards spiritual and then if you are not you are not it is both the ways achesh is not just uh, talking about the uh, spiritual growth he is talking about life itself as well but that is true as until the uh, mental health and emotional health is not in, if we don't have mental or emotional health the doors of spirituality are in a way kind of blocked because what is spirituality pure state of being and if you are emotionally down or emotionally sh- shaken up it sh- itself is non spiritual state so to have nirmal chetna as acha she is saying here it means to make sure that your thinking is kind of not negative positivity in your thought and your emotions are actually balanced or you're able to uh, release them off and how you deal with these emotions how do you deal with life depends on who you are every person has a different approach to deal with things to deal with things depends on the person and depending on how you deal with it you are happy or sad so the next thing is dosh agni sam malakriya the word dosh the this um, word sam here sam means it could be samyak which means right uh, sam means equalized balanced so you could take it both the ways and there is a concept of three dosha in um, ayurvedic tradition anyone knows about it vat pitt and ka so if those three do three vat pitt and ka are balanced then you're healthy then you're happy but if there is an imbalance in them you're in trouble now the the theory is that not everyone like we all are different kinds of personality some are vat personality some are pit personality some are kapha personality or some are mix of them 
Now the balance is not that all the three should be equally there in you. The balance is about whatever personality you carry, that should be in a balanced state. So suppose I'm a Vat personality, my Vat should be balanced. And if you're a Pit personality, the, the personality you carry, you should have that in a balanced state. And it is a very uh, important concept of life actually. There are three, three sisters, they used to be very close to each other and they met on a Christmas uh, occasion. While returning back home, one of the sisters got into accident and died. So the sorrow for the rest of the two was immense. Now how do you deal with that sorrow will depend on your personality. How you, in, how you take the sorrow and how you uh, fight the sorrow one of them, she actually um, was a very family person, had a lot of time for the family, love, care, taking care of everything in the family. So that kind of personality, when she had this shock, she retrieved from the family, she went into seclusion. Now seclusion was not her personality and her approach to deal with that sorrow was wrong. She went into depression and other problems. She had problems with her life, with the family life. The other lady, she chose to go for too many work so that she wouldn't th have time to think about her grief. So she, instead of having one job, she took three. She wasn't able to handle that. She went into other kind of trouble. Now you see here the, the attitude of how you um, handle the grief was different. Both of them had the similar kind of emotional situation, the pain that they lost their sister, but one chose to go into seclusion, the other chose to do too much of work. And for both of them, it did not work. So the dosha concept is related to our everyday living. Depending on the kind of personality we have, our food actually should vary. That's Achashi is trying to talk about food here as well. That what kind of our food we take is it healthy or unhealthy? This is a general thing, right? We all we would say, okay, don't eat junk food, eat healthy food. But even in healthy, there would be a, a variation for each kind of personality. If you're a Vat personality, the kind of diet you should have should be different rather than for a fit personality. And when we see some people are very joyful in winter, but as soon as summer comes, they are not by themselves. And for some, it's the other way around. So why is this the case? It is because that weather is good for that personality. How do you deal with this? You're born with it, isn't it? So you cannot change your personality. You cannot change your what. You cannot change the fit or cup. So, and the uh, weather condition is not in your hand. But this, the diet actually helps. So what you take the first meal in your, in your morning would actually should be according to your personality. Some people uh, want to drink like cold water in the morning, but for some they need like hot. So that would vary depending on what personality you have. And if you know, check, the, check your personality and take the meal accordingly, you would find people change drastically. We don't know why there is a problem in the personality. The problem in the personality is not that the person is um, not good enough, but the person is not receiving uh, the exact kind of intake depending on the personality. And that would create a problem. So, the, um, there's another actually case here where there was a, a person who went for, after his studies, he went for a job in the restaurant. And everyone around him in the restaurant were very, uh, the whole staff was very good. People uh, would take care of the uh, guest who would come in the hotel and everything was fine. But he wasn't feeling comfortable there. He didn't feel comfortable talking to people and getting engaged and like you know interacting with them and uh, being communicative with them. So he had a big concern and everyone is able to do it, why not me? 
This is a general question, right? When all are able to do math, why not me? When all are able to do their best in their social life, why not me? So this question of why not me is a big question. But then, if you're able to check what kind of personality you are, you'll be able to have help yourself or others around that. And it's very simple that depending on the person, the vat, pitta, and kaf, if you choose your profession according to that, you would do fine. But people generally choose profession because there is like, you know, uh, this hot uh, thing, being doctor is great and uh, it, it's fine. But if you don't have the personality which is needed there, some, some professions demand too much of socialization, interaction with people, some need to be in seclusion. If you choose a profession, which is just to be quietly working on your, in your office and if it's not according to your personality, you would think, oh, this was a boring thing. You don't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So if the profession, if chosen according to that personality, it would be Sukh. But if it is not according to your personality, that is Sukh. When one is enjoying that whole profession, the other is not because you're not in the right place. It's not that you're not the right person. You are the right person in yourself, but the placement of yours which you made was wrong. So we all, and the good thing is each personality has their own abilities. Some, like for example, a vast person has a lot of thinking ability. So if your profession involves thinking, you will excel. But if it is not about thinking and analyzing and stuff, you are fine. I mean, you do good in your job. But it wouldn't be like a progress the way it would happen. But the same person in a profession, if you change yourself to that profession, which involves what your abilities are, then the excellence, the, per the perfection, the growth, the contribution will be much higher. So the decision of uh, life, of course, ultimately we end up saying happy and sad, like we define everything that, oh, I enjoy my uh, profession, I don't enjoy, it's boring, but I do it. But underlying thing is what you are. And what you chose makes a big difference for you. So here, the vat, pith, and cup should be balanced to make yourself a happy personality. Even a person doesn't meet anyone in the whole day, the person need, need not, um, for some, they need someone to smile, right? But for some others, they are smiling by themselves. So where's the difference? It's the personality. So the selection of the diet, the selection of the field you work in, the selection of the lifestyle you chose, everything defines your happiness. So here, Acha, she's saying, Samad Dosh. If the three Dosh, Vat, Pitta, are balanced, then you're healthy. In Ayurveda, it is simply defined that if these three are imbalanced, you are diseased. Now, to analyze whether we are all healthy or diseased, <laughs> this will be a different case. But it is a possibility that anytime you find, like when you have a, a meal in a party time, how is the sleep state, how is your thinking process the next day or the night, it's different. And you can literally see there is great impact on it. For some, a small alcohol has a great impact. For some, they drink too much, nothing happens to them. So it is again the in, inner, inner system which actually makes it a difference. A difference. And the science of Ayurveda mentions that the vata, pitta and kapha is decided based on the time you're born. So if you're born in the early night, midnight, late night, early morning, so the time when a person is born, and again, there are different kind of tests to uh, diagnose which personality you carry and stuff. So this is another interesting thing to uh, tap into when you see um, people, you, if you see problem, this could be one way of dealing that problem as well. To, to check the uh, personality based on Vata, Pitta and Kapha and then give a treatment accordingly. The second thing which Achashi is mentioning is Agni. Agni means fire. Your kitchen fire and your stomach fire. Both. <laughs> Nowadays the kitchen fire doesn't work, right? It's microwave fire which works. 
and that is another problem. You take in so much of um, unhealthy, I mean, uh, whatever energy it is, and that brings in more disease. But if the kitchen fire is working fine, and see if you go back to history, what did they use to burn a fire? It was, it was not like the gas thing. It was natural things. Uh, they used wood. They used pot to uh, cook, which would be again mud. So all natural ingredients were used to produce the food and that would give you all balance of different elements in the body. What are the five elements, right? Air, water, fire. And which is the workshop coming up next? Fire. fire. So fire element, will uh, Samiji will discuss about digestive system mainly. Any digestive disorders we have, what are the different mantras which Ashish has given to heal this uh, digestive system disorders or issues with the digestive system. And uh, we'll, we'll have more on in the workshop, but the important thing is the fire should be um, enough active to digest your food. People sometimes I see they drink the water before eating. They drink water, they eat, and then again drink water. Drinking water before and after is unhealthy because it dilutes your chersia in the uh, juice in the stomach. So there are practices which can be very simple but can have an impact on your system. And if your digestive system is not functioning fine, your body will not function fine, your mind will not function fine. If a person has constipation, you would see there is some problem in the personality. It might not be expressed problem, but there would still be something. There is something which a person holds on to and doesn't let it go. So it's important that we have our system cleared off to live a happy life. Even in sadhana, when if you're doing job, if you're doing any kind of spiritual practice, the system should be clear. Pranayam we do, we do meditation. If you have done meditation after your system has got cleared up, you find a drastic difference in the experience of meditation. But if there is constipation, though the energy is activated, we are not able to shift it to a higher plane. So you see here, the food we take and the whole process of digestion has a big impact on our um, spiritual practice. I mean, during the time of Bhagavan Mahavir, they ate one meal, right? And that didn't impact so much because by evening, their stomach would be again light and they could do it. And morning again, it would be an empty stomach and it would be fine. But now we are, our eating system, our habit is different. It's not that it is wrong. Again, of course, you could train your body to go back, back to one meal a day. But the, the point is that um, when you choose the, the practice, depending on your health conditions, depending on your capacity, some people are fine with fasting and taking one meal a day. But for some, the moment they, uh, it's three hours fast fine, they cannot concentrate after that, they haven't eaten anything. So our body would be different for each person and depending on that, we will have to take the, uh, our, our dietary habits will also vary basically. For some, sugar is needed without sweet, the mind doesn't work. For some, it is chili, which helps them active. <laughs> <laughs> so, so again, it depends on why is it a difference of taste? It's not just the craving is there. Like, you know, sometimes we think that this person has a lot of craving for this kind of thing. The craving is because the body needs it. It's not just like um, attachment concept. It is the need of the body. You would see that at different times, there are some times you, need, you feel like you, you can take a lot of uh, vegetables more than you're eating regularly. And then you think, why I'm still feeling like I need to eat more? Because that is how the body, I mean, the body speaks. Of course, sometimes we feel like it is a craving it could be a craving at some point, but usually you have to check. Mostly it happens is the body uh, speaks up depending on the need of the body. So if you check on that, you would feel uh, you will have a different approach to what you eat and what you live, basically. 
So the health, health is also based on our digestive system. And of course, added to this is malakriya, which means excretory system. The excretion process should of course be uh, very uh, perfect and it's crucial. Now the excretory system involves many different things. Of course, here it is related to digestive system, but even your exhalation, is it good enough or is it short? Because if you're not releasing the carbon dioxide enough, then you're, you're piling up that and that makes you lazy. When, when we yawn, we actually, what do we do? Yeah. <coughs> so there is some pile up and then you just release it up. So the, for example, many times we do a lot of physical work, exercise for example, what happens by exercise? You sweat. There is a toxic content in the body and that toxicity could be released by exercise, it could be released by pranayama, it could be released by other methods as well. There are different kinds of practice in um, this thing, um, in Ayurveda Vedic practice, where uh, like for example, anima or shankrakshalan, these practices are um, neti for example, these practices are considered to be um, undertaken by a person, a yogi, regular basis so that the body detoxifies and it's more uh, rejuvenating for the spiritual practice. So uh, when we say that uh, like some, for some people walking helps, that fast walking can help them sweat and release the toxicity. So the caffeine we take, the medicines we take, there's so much of toxicity which we, we, we carry with that and that it could be released to any of these methods and if you're not releasing that enough then again you might be in trouble so when you have an intake there should be an outlet as well it's it's a it's a natural process that is um, anything you, you receive you process and release it's a there's a concept of paryakti indianism where we, um, for example, if I'm speaking, I'm receiving the particles related to speech. I process them, I create those sentences, and I release them. And while I release sentences, you're listening, right? So whether it is thinking, speaking, eating, everything goes through this process where we receive something, whether it's food intake or other intakes, we process it and we release it. If that mechanism is balanced, then you're healthy. Whether it is breath, food, speech, even, for example, thoughts. We pile up certain, uh, this thing, then it goes on and on in your mind. You're not able to let it go. What happens? Frustration. <laughs> you create a pressure in you. So, of course, as we are thinking, we are releasing in a way, but, uh, an intense release is actually clearing up your uh, mental, emotional baggage is again a very important concept. But detoxify that, detoxify your body is equally important. And further, actually, she's trying to say, Leta hai ahan jo nit parimit hit patthi karta hai karaniya jo chintan purvaka tathya. The first sentence is clear. Leta hai ahar jo, who takes the food. Nit parimit hit pathya. So nit means regular basis. Parimit means to the required uh, degree. Hit means which is uh, beneficial. And pathya means which is healthy. So here you see the whole thing which I was talking about the food is in these four words. Your meal could not, should be um, regulated. It could not be like you eat sometimes one o'clock, sometimes four o'clock, because then your system is not ready to digest it accordingly. So if you have a balanced eating time, in a sense, it could be one meal a day, it's fine, but you have a routine of that. That routine will help your system to be ready to digest at that specific time. So that um, regulation of that is important. Parimit is enough in the sense not going to any extremes, but uh, balanced diet 
hitkari which means good for you and again when i say good for you the whole story of uh, ayurveda comes into play that not everything is good for everyone and not everything is good in every season so we also see this right like young kids their diet would actually vary people who have a lot of thinking involved they might need a different kind of diet when we see ache shimap prakriti when he ate it was so less how could he survive with so much of work around him but he was perfectly fine he never ate any junk he had never tasted pani puri or anything of that kachori or anything in his life never in his plate he would he had had it ever in his life so that kind of um, discipline is actually where it makes a big uh, difference so sometimes we see that um, there are some people who are very stressed out while they are studying the stress could half be gone off just by taking care of what is the right diet for that child or for that person if you don't know the right diet they might just eat junk not serving enough to what the need of the their kind of work in body is they might end up into many other troubles so uh, patya is a course where it is healthy for you it's not just anything and everything <laughs> you suggest that the body kind of tells you what you need but then you say that people then eat junk so doesn't the body kind of warn you so basically when we uh, there are two ways of uh, two situations both is true mm-hmm. at times you have a natural craving of something which you not understanding why am i having this for junk it is not the body's craving it is just your mental um, attachment to taste basically i mean that's how i would put it now to draw a line which is a natural craving and which is a mental construction constructed craving you have to be very um, you should have an a little bit of awareness to really decide on it but uh, you you can if you're uh, conscious you you'll real, realize that that uh, why do i have so much of for example as simple as too much of coffee a person drinks or someone would have would need some other stuff or someone needs a lot of sugar or craving for sweet or craving for chili so these kind of craving usually um are based on the need of the body as well but mostly when we look into the junk food it is um, just a, a bad eating habit i would say has come into the community <laughs> so uh, if a child is saying no i would i need junk and only junk is uh, tasty for the child it's um, you have to see even i mean when we we say junk there is something in the junk which is helping the child what is that it could be given in a different format to the child it need not be in a junk format the difference would be if you are craving a sweet uh, something sweet that's different to craving an ice cream or craving a particular chocolate or something okay, that's that the answer <laughs> that's better <laughs> Yeah, the sweet can be like if you're happy eating even a date or something. It still satisfies your yeah, body's yeah. needs. But then if you want a Ferrero Rocher, then that's like uh, junk gravy. <laughs> Makes sense. And mother understands, I think, better, right? <laughs> so uh, after the food thing, Acharya is saying, "Karna hai karni ye jo chintan purvak tatya." Anything you do, whatever is needed to be done. it should be done with chintan work with contemplation with analysis rather than just doing it for the sake of doing it and there is where uh, acheshi is slowly um, shifting he started with food and then swastha uh, so indriya man suprasanna and he comes about um, the action mode uh, here anasakta hai vishaye mein sham shram mein leen sahanashil satsang rat होता स्वस्थ अधीन एंड हाउ डू यू डिफाइन योर एक्शन हाउ डू यू रेगुलेट योर एक्शन अनासक्त है विषय में शम श्रम में लीन द थ्री टर्म्स इन जैनिज्म राइट शम श्रम एंड सम सो दी वी हैव टू ट्रेडिशन श्रम एंड ट्रेडिशन एंड ब्राह्मण ट्रेडिशन and the word shraman the word shram shraman in the, the uh, what is shraman tradition actually about if you have to show a drastic difference between the brahmanical tradition and the shraman tradition what would be the 
key difference. So the root word here could be actually um, could create three different of this thing: sham, shram, and sum. Sham means to have pacified emotions. Shram means self-effort, and sum means equanimity. So these are the three identifying names or words for the Jainism or Jainism and Buddhism. Whereas when we, when we compare this with the um, Brahmanical tradition, the, the drastic difference, do, do they vote for these three or not? Shram, pacified emotions. Shram, self-effort. And third one is sometimes is equanimity. Now you cannot say that they wouldn't vote for it. Right, because that's natural. Equanimity is a, a virtue for all. But when you look into it deeply, you would find that the big difference is they would say God has created everything. Everything is designed by God. So the concept of self-effort gets um, diluted there. The other thing is the foundation of Jainism is samta. Even when you uh, say ahimsa parmo dharma, right? There was, uh, there's a professor in Calcutta, he came to Acharya Sri Mahapragati and he asked, what is the foundation of your Ahimsa? Where is Ahimsa founded? What is the ground thing or the root thing which actually brings up this Ahimsa? And it is Sangata. So even when we practice Ahimsa, why? For Sangata, for equanimity. If samata, samaya pa, uh, uh, dharma mudahari muni, that is the verse in Achara, samta is the key spirituality of uh, a monk. Which means with how you define whether your act is spiritual or not, at some point you might have trouble with defining using the word ahimsa, but then you can check with samata. Are you in a state of samata, your spiritual? If you are not, then you're in trouble. Whether even you might be practicing ahimsa, but if samta is absent, that is not the core of spirituality. Samta means equanimous state, no attachment, no aversion. That is the key state to accomplish whether you call it vairagi, you call it samta, you call it equanimity, it's all the same. So, sam, shram, shram is the three words which is actually she's using here, and he brings it anasapta hai vishayame. If, if there is an attachment towards or craving towards the worldly things, then you're in unhealthy state. Because if the moment you have a craving, you want to go and satisfy it, until it doesn't get satisfied, you're not, you don't receive the happiness, nahi hai, and once you've accomplished it, it doesn't stay for long. So in Jainism, we have four dhyan, right? Artha dhyan, Raudra dhyan, Dharma dhyan, and Shukla dhyan. The first one, Artha dhyan is, if you are looking forward for accomplishing something, until you don't accomplish it, you're not happy. So that is Ardhajan. If you have accomplished it, the fear of losing it is another happiness. If you have something you want to get rid of it, until you don't get rid of it, you're unhappy. <coughs> Once you've got rid of it, you constantly think, what if it comes again? <laughs> So all these things, I like it, I don't have it. I have it, but I might lose it. Right? And I don't want it, that could end up a problem. And if I lose it, if I don't have what I don't want, or what if I get it? Mm -hmm. the, these two words, like likes and dislikes, follow all this, and that is a problem. And that is asakti towards the wish. So if one is able to let, get rid of this, it could actually work well. Now, to get rid of it at a higher plane um, might be tough at some point. There's a person who came to Acheshi Tulsi. He had a question. He said, I have a, I have a problem. <coughs> I, my son is lost. Should I go and search my son or not? Is it spirituality or it is not? According to dharma, should I go and search him or shouldn't I search him? What would be the answer? Search for him. Search for him. Actually, she didn't say search for him. Whatever you make on a mistake is 
<laughs> Acha she asked, I had a counter question. Acha she asked, when you gave birth to the child, did you come and ask me? <laughs> no? And why are you coming and asking me now? So when you give birth to the child, it means a social responsibility. It's not like dharma, right? It's not like uh, practicing something for your moksha. So when you chose to go by your social life, you didn't take my permission then, or you didn't ask or confirm whether it is spirituality or not. Why do you want to put spirituality into a trap now? You've chosen that responsibility. So here, when we talk about even um, detachment, that higher detachment towards a family or other things might come later. But if we are able to practice detachment at a very simple level, when you're eating, you eat with detachment. If you're if you don't didn't get things which you had to which you had planned, it's okay. To say it is okay when you you had some plans and it got messed up because of something, to say okay is detachment. And if that detachment comes, then the higher things actually would come in eventually. But you should start very simple and grow there. In the practical living life, let go things. Be easy with anything which comes, which is not according to your taste or your liking. And there is where you practice spirituality on a day to day basis. We might have attachment towards um, food, we might have attachment towards thinking. The way you think, you're obsessed about it. This is the way I think, and this is the way it should be or my thinking is better than the other, you're holding on to something. There's nothing better or worse. There are all possible good things around everywhere, right? So to, to not hold on to what you are holding on to only, or at least be open to others, that is detachment. So detachment could be at different level. Detachment in context of anger, detachment in context of ego, detachment in context of greed. Everything demands detachment. So any emotion you pick, if you apply your detachment there, you might be actually better off. And it just takes a little bit of awareness. At the end of the day, if you think over yourself, how was my day? What was my degree of detachment or attachment? That might be a little bit. And finally, Ache, she is saying, Anasakta hai vishay me, shram shram me leen, sahana shila satsangarat, kotha swasta satadeen. Sahanshi means tolerance, which means having samatha, and then Acha she brings satsang. Right? Adhyatma Padavali it should have satsang in it. <laughs> so why satsang is important? So that you encounter, you be with that kind of energy or flow of thinking which will enrich you. We all have a set things, set personalities, set uh, goals. But if you're not backed up with constant rejuvenation by your spiritual thinking, then we lose the trap. We might end up into problem. And one big component of life to heal, the source is satsang. Mm -hmm. If you're able to read, analyze things, satsang actually has different ways of going about. You listen to a lecture discourse, you read a book, you think, even one sentence, you, if you're able to think at a deeper level, for Hanuman, just setting sun was enlightening. That worked everything. The whole life changed. Enlightenment came. So you could see it need not be a big thing. Even a small thing, if analyzed at a deeper level with detachment, could bring in a drastic change. So satsang is actually one of the core forces to keep us on track, to heal ourselves, to help us grow spiritually. So here, Acheshi has brought this beautiful concept of sukh, happiness, where it has a very deeper uh, meaning in it. This happiness is relative, but again, it is related to what we are and who we are. And if we are able to keep track or check who we are and nourish ourselves accordingly, and of course, try to go by some, shram and some, that makes the whole story a complete story. And it is a beautiful package, I think, to look into happiness from a different person. Okay. Boom. So announcements. The first one is, of course, the fire element thing coming up. 
It's on April 2nd and no, 1st April, right? Yeah, 1st April. April, sorry. And the place is the same old one. So you can, uh, it's going to be more related to veganism and um, digestive system where uh, any digestive disorders we have, there are different ways to heal it. There are mantras, there are exercises, and of course, there's going to be a lecture on it as well. So uh, you can bring in people who are not from the regular uh, Jain background because it is just related to health and uh, well-being. And of course, veganism as a concept of non-violence. And when people want to change their diet, they, they end up into trouble because they're not aware of the other possibilities. We have seen people who wanted to change from, um, like, change to uh, vegetarian diet even. Indian eating habits have so much of like of options, right? But the Americans or the British people don't know those options and they go into malnutrition or they're not able to cope up with this kind of diet. So enriching or having knowledge of it actually helps a, a big, um, it helps you a lot in keeping up with what your own practice. So vegan concept in context of Jainism would be discussed. And we have uh, Sagar and um, Deep Priya. Deep Priya. Deep Priya, yes. There's going to be two who, are, who is coming from Yen Jain groups. And they have a strong veganism group with themselves as well. So it's going to be a collaborative thing from them and us. And of course, uh, we, it's from 10.30 this time to make it more easy for all. <laughs> Uh, the other is retreat, the 6th and 7th of May. It's heading very close, I think, now. It's just a month or more. Yeah. So we hope you, you're preparing that uh, for that as well. I mean, we should prepare for that. <laughs> you prepare with your friends. Okay. So, we do a Samaika thing. Arhantanam namo siddhanam namo ayariyanam namo vachayanam namo lue sahasahanam Eso Panchanamukkaru Sava Pau Panasano Mangalan Savi Singh Padamahavi Mangalam Chattari Mangalam Arhanta Mangalam Siddha Mangalam Sahu Mangalam Kevi Pandatu Hamo Mangalam Chattari Loguttama Arhanta Loguttama Siddha Loguttama Sahu Loguttama Kevi Pandatu Hamo Loguttama Chattari Saranam Pavajami Arhanti Saranam Pavajami Siddhi Saranam Pavajami Sahu Saranam Pavajami Kevali Pannatang Dhammang Sarnan Pavajami Dhammu Mangal Mukketha Mahim Sasan Jamutabu Devami Tang Dhammang Santi Jasidhammi Sayavanu Chaita Harham Vasam Chakavati Mahidhyo Santi Santi Kariloe Patto Vai Manutaram Devadana Vagandhava Chakkarak Kasakinna Ravam Hayarin Namang Santi Dukkaram Jekarin Pitam Mangalam Bhagavan Viro Mangalam Gautamogani Mangalam Stuhi Padradya Jaina Dharmos to Mangalam Vigan Harana Mangala Karan Swam of Hipshuno Nanguno Lakisumiran Kriya Sareya Chintya Kam Angutayam with Vasila Titana Pandar Shri Guru Gautam Samari Manuan Chita Parinata Manuan Chita Parinata एक दिवसीय प्यास, वैनी वन प्यास पर डे, यू कैन थिंक ऑफ प्यास